a sneaky new AMD card with 32 gigs of VRAM just popped up. Could this be a silent killer? Also, Intel's rumored 24 gigabyte graphics card might finally bring some brains to their graphics game. And ChatGPT can now guess where you live just from a photo. That's totally normal. Nothing wrong there. And AI video tools just made the 5060 Ti kind of useful. You know the drill, let's get into it. Ever wonder what happens if AMD drops a high-end GPU to compete with Nvidia's 5090? Well, I have some good news for you. Let's check it out. And I'm only kind of kidding when it comes to competing with the 5090 because in reality, this is more of a workstation graphics card, but the specs are highly interesting. Let's dig into it. AMD is preparing the Radeon Pro series with Navi 48, XTW graphics card, and 32 gigs of memory on board. Now listen, if you're gonna compete with workstation and AI graphics cards, them some rookie numbers. You gotta pump them up. 32 gigs of memory on board. It's a good start, I guess. AMD is finally bringing RDNA 4 to professional GPUs. The Radeon RX series will soon expand with two new options. You've got the Radeon RX 9060 XT and the 9070 GRE. These are on the consumer side, targeting lower price points, mostly for gamers, right? However, professionals using Radeon GPUs have been limited to RDNA 3 series, which has not seen updates until now. Rumors circulated for weeks that AMD planned a Navi 48 GPU with 32 gigs of memory. So far, nothing confirms this for the gaming lineup despite reliable leakers insisting it was coming. It turns out, hey, looks like AMD was doing it all along, except uh, they're not doing it for gamers. <laughs> this is for the workstation audience. Uh, the Radeon Pro series will soon gain Navi 48 XTW GPU. This unnamed card, likely part of the Radeon Pro W9000 series, Will feature that 32 gigs of memory. That falls short of last gen's 48 or 64 gigs, but specs may still change. It's worth remembering that AMD's advancing AI event is set for June. And guess what? I would imagine that some of these cards maybe make a, a slight appearance there, if not maybe some hints on specs. AMD should launch 64 and 128 gig models to push the use for AI. Again, it comes back to memory on this. We will see higher memory options on these cards. I would be completely shocked if we didn't. Guys, let me know if you have any workstation users in the comments. Let me know if this is piquing your interest and what you think down below. A graphics card leak with 24 gigabytes of RAM. Finally, a company with some common sense, you know, as long as we're not talking about CPUs. Here's what the latest Intel rumors tell us. Let's check it out. Sparkle is confirming the Arc Battle Mage GPU. Uh, this one with 24 gigs of memory slated for May or June. This is pretty nutty. The official account for Sparkle Technology in China has confirmed plans for an upgraded ARC graphics card. Now, I had the chance to play with the new Battle Mage Sparkle card. Uh, a lot of fun. Uh, ended up being a, kind of a hard card to, to match up with matching components. Just that blue is just a little weird. Not a whole lot of companies taking advantage of that color scheme. But aside from aesthetics, pretty good performance. 24 gigs of VRAM on this new ARC GPU? Oh, boy. That is nutty. Let's dig into it, see what's going on. Shortly after Intel launched the ARC B580 graphics card, rumors began to hit the web about a potential launch of a new model with an upgraded memory configuration. The B580 features 12 gigs of GDDR6 across that 192-bit memory bus. But these rumors suggest that Intel may just double the capacity to 24 gigabytes. Now let's talk about rumors on this card. I've heard this a few different times that, oh, we're getting a 24 gigabyte card from Intel. Oh, it's gonna be for gaming. Oh wait, it's for workstation. And this is outlined in the article as well. Rumors clearly suggest that the 24 gig model would target productivity rather than gaming. However, it turns out there might be a chance that these rumors refer to the gaming version after all. According to the company response, the original plan was to launch the 24 gig model between May and June. It's not clear if that is still accurate as the product may have been completely canceled or pushed back. The company representative who responded also said they're looking forward to increased sales and that the model is still being arranged. Now, guys, we have to remain a little bit skeptical. We are talking about rumors here. Sparkle also does make professional ARC GPUs, so there may be, maybe it's a communication mishap, or there really could be an ARC B580 24 gig model that is geared towards the gaming audience. Do you think this is real and this is actually gonna show up? Let me know what you think down below. Uh-oh, breaking news. <laughs> this article's been updated. 
Sparkle Taiwan has first refuted the claim and later confirmed that the statement was issued by Sparkle China. However, the company claims that the information is still false. Damn it! <laughs> oh no. Let's see what uh, the comments are saying. AI, 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 AI. Yep, that's uh, yeah, that's a big use for a lot of these uh, high VRAM, high memory cards. And here's a comment from someone who actually uses an ARC card. As an ARC user and financially common sense spender, looking at you nutters that overpay for AMD and NVIDIA cards, boy, this guy is very pro ARC, pro Intel. I do not see the sense in the 24 gigabyte B580. The B580 is a nice card and it does its job at the entry level. Sadly, it does not have the power to compete with the 90 or 50 series to warrant 24 gigs of memory for gaming. My buddy just sold his B580 recently for an MSRP 5070. What do we think about these art cards? Would it be something that you would try if the price was right and the memory configs made sense? Let me know down below. Hey, good news. OpenAI knows where you live, even if you've never used ChatGPT before. What could possibly go wrong? Let's dig into it. ChatGPT is now a potent tool for finding the locations of photos, which raises some doxing concerns. Now guys, this is revolving around ChatGPT's latest models. You've got the O3 and the O4 Mini, and they've dramatically improved ChatGPT's ability to analyze images and guess real world locations, sometimes down to things like landmarks, bars, and all that crazy stuff. Uh, the newly available O3 and O4 Mini are so good at this reverse location search task that showing off this newfound functionality has become a viral social media trend. However, this apparent geographic needle in a haystack hunting improvement raises privacy concerns and pro geoguessers on social media platforms might be a little worried too. And it's not just ChatGPT taking the photo and just taking a gander at it and making an educated guess using reverse lookup. It's actually acting like Photoshop, which is very, very interesting. This newfound ability of ChatGPT is a great example of the strength and visual reasoning being brought to the platform with model updates. It can now reason based on the content of uploaded images and perform some Photoshop-esque tasks like cropping, rotating, and zooming in. What world are we living in? This is wild. Now, OpenAI themselves, they acknowledge the strength of the models and emphasize that they're trying to make an effort to block sensitive queries and try to take action on abuse if it's detected. My big question is, how do you detect that there's actual abuse going on? If you're using this tool and it has a functionality for reverse image lookup and can do all of these complex tasks that like Photoshop is capable of, how are you able to identify if someone has malicious intent versus not? That's, I guess, my big question on how this would all work. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. And I also have something more for you when it comes to AI. You know, this might actually be the only thing going for NVIDIA's new 8 gigabyte 5060 Ti card because there's new tech that allows you to create AI videos locally with only six gigs of VRAM. AI generated videos are now possible with gaming GPUs with just six gigabytes of VRAM. Now this is using new AI architecture called FramePack. FramePack offers a practical implementation of video diffusion using fixed length temporal context for more efficient processing. So how this works is FramePack works by compressing video frames into a fixed size temporal context. It reduces the usual graphics card memory demands of video diffusion models, which typically you look at something like 12 gigabytes or more to be you know, a common starting point. Using this compression allows you to have the same type of effect using a card that is equipped with less memory, which is kind of interesting. All right, so what graphics card do you need to have in order to take advantage of this? Uh, FramePack requires RTX 3040 50 series graphics cards with support for the FP16 and BF16 data formats. Support on Turing and older architectures has not been verified and no mention of AMD and Intel hardware. Why would this be something that you would potentially be interested in? Really, it opens the door for casual creators to make GIFs, memes, short clips, without using expensive cloud services, just utilizing the hardware that you have in your existing PC. Uh, anyone with a mid-range graphics card, you know, based on this can now kind of experiment with locally generated AI content, which is, that's kind of fun. So you may want to take advantage of this, check it out. It is called Frame Pack. It's generating some really cool stuff. 
with very little hardware required. So check it out. Guys, that's going to do it for today. Make sure that you uh, hit the beloved like and subscribe buttons in tandem. Just one, just hit them like that. So easy. Thanks so much. If you have uh, anything that you'd like me to cover this week, post it down below. Other than that, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.